Hi, welcome to my channel and another experiment with the Arduino Uno. This experiment is titled Digital Hourglass, where each LED lights after a period of time, initially uh, 10 minutes, but for the sake of this video it's been reduced to 6 seconds. And like an hourglass, once the time has been reached, you can reset it by tilting the board with the tilt switch and it resets and it counts all over again. So this was an easy transition from the last experiment which was more uh, visual uh, where we tried to replicate the look uh, of, of the grill on the kit car in the Knight Rider series. And it's a good example to show you how you can completely change uh, the function of a circuit just through the code because essentially the only difference is the uh, tilt switch that's been added to this and the code has changed it into a timer uh, from uh, pretty much just a visual type of effect circuit. So let's take a look at the circuit. Pretty simple circuit. So we're using pins 2 through 7 and declaring them as outputs and we have six LEDs tied to those pins through current limiting resistors to ground 220 ohms and in addition we have this tilt switch so this is the tilt switch the pins weren't long enough so I had to solder these male header pins onto uh, the pins to extend them and then I, I bent them at 90 degrees and basically there's a ball bearing in there that uh, when you tilt this toward where the pins are it closes or makes the contact between these two pins shorting them out and then if you tilt it the other way it uh, rolls away from the pins and it's an open circuit again if you can hear that and that's the tilt switch that came with the kit so here's the tilt switch and it goes to ground through a 10k resistor and it's connected to pin 8 here so we're measuring the voltage on uh, the tilt switch pin at pin 8 so let's take a look at the code before we get into the code I want to cover uh, this function the millisecond function we use this briefly in an experiment where we had uh, a calibration that we wanted to do unlike the delay the millisecond counts time but it doesn't stop the microcontroller from functioning so with the millisecond function it's counting 1000 times per second so it's counting in milliseconds and so as soon as you turn on the microcontroller it's counting uh, the delay just freezes the microcontroller. It can't react to input uh, or output. So we're using the millisecond function and also instead of the integer uh, data type uh, we're going to be using the long. The integer, an integer variable is a 16-bit number and it allows you to count from minus 32,768 up to plus 32,767 and if you're counting in milliseconds that's used up real quick so we're using uh, a variable of type long which is a 32-bit number and with a 32-bit number we can count down to negative 2,147,000,000 483,648 and plus 2,147,483,647. But that's the range you would have if you were doing some calculations where you needed negative and positive numbers, but we're just counting. So we don't need the negative numbers. So this allows us actually now to count a total of over 4 billion. 
and this is enough time or this is enough space to count to over 50 days so that's why we're going to use uh, an unsigned long which is an unsigned variable of type long which is 32 bit number so let's look at the code okay so a big part of this program is keeping track of previous states and current states so we start off with declaring uh, a variable switch pin of integer type as a constant equal to pin 8. So pin 8 is the pin that we have the tilt switch connected to. So we're reading the voltage at pin 8. Here we're initializing the variable previous time as unsigned long and this is where we'll store the last time an LED was updated. Then we declare a variable switch state of integer type equal to zero and we have to keep track of the previous and current state of the switch, the tilt switch. So here we're initiating, initializing it to zero and we're initializing the previous switch state to zero. So switch state to zero and previous switch state to zero. And then we're declaring uh, an LED, a variable called LED as an integer equal to two. So the LEDs are connected from pins two through seven. So we will use a loop to uh, go through pins two through seven and declare them all as outputs within a loop. So this circuit is an hourglass where each LED lights after 10 minutes. And if you calculate, we've got 1,000 milliseconds per second, and that's 60,000 milliseconds per minute and 600,000 milliseconds in a 10 minute period. So each interval is 600,000 milliseconds. So here we use a for loop to initialize pins two through seven uh, as outputs. So we have integer x equal to two and for x less than eight increment x and pin mode x and for each X, declare it an output. Here we set the tilt switch pin as an input. We use pin mode, switch pin, input. Next, we're storing the number created by the millisecond function. We're storing that in an unsigned long variable called current time. Next, we try to figure out if enough time has passed to turn on an LED. So we compare the current time to the previous time, an LED turned on, and if that time is greater than the interval that we set, in this case the 600,000 milliseconds, we run this if statement, which will turn on an LED. So if current time minus previous time is greater than the interval, we're then going to save the current time as the new previous time. So previous time will now equal, the new previous time will now be equal to the current time. And we will turn on an LED. So digital right, LED high. And LED, the first one will be two. Then we will increment the variable LED. For this experiment, the book wanted you to think of something to happen at the one hour mark. Uh, so they added this code and they left it up to you. I added a buzzer and I'll show you how I did that. And I, uh, I'll show you that there was a problem with uh, having that occur uh, when LED was equal to seven. That ended up happening uh, at LED 
when LED 5 was turned on and you needed to because it was LED was already incremented so that needed to be equal to 8 but I'll show you that later next we read the switch value so we want to see if the switch value has changed so we digital read the switch pin we read pin 8 and we set that to switch state now if we want to compare the switch state to the previous switch state so if the switch has changed if its state has changed here we're comparing uh, previous switch state to the current switch state. If they have changed, we're going to use this for loop to now turn off LEDs 2 through 7. So now that we've turned off all the LEDs, if the switch state has changed, we have to then reset all our variables. So we have to reset the LED variable equal to 2 again we have to reset the timer so that the previous time is now equal to the current time and then we have to reset the switch state so we take previous switch and equal that to the current switch state so let's take a look at the circuit in operation because I didn't want to wait 10 minutes for each LED to light up and be able to show you the circuit in operation. I've shortened the interval to 3000 milliseconds which is six seconds so I'll activate the tilt switch by tilting this circuit and then I've got a stopwatch here so there it goes it's six seconds uh, for each LED to light up So it should complete in 18 seconds. That's close. About 18 seconds. So you can see this working. Tilt it. And that's just that ball bearing uh, moving to the left to short out those two pins. So then I added the piezo so it sounds when the uh, sixth LED lights. So here's the here's the piezo or piezo. Connect this up right there. I'll tilt this again. So I use the tone function to have that piezo sound and if you recall the tone function has three arguments the pin that you're activating uh, the frequency and then time and I have uh, 275 uh, for the frequency and 6000 for the time I, I, I believe that's 6000 milliseconds So here's where I added the tone function. So I have it connected to pin 12 and I'm using 275 and 6000 milliseconds which is 6 seconds. And I had to change this to 8 because this tone would go off when uh, LED 5 would turn on. And so that happens because we increment the LED here. So it's actually already uh, incremented to look at uh, the sixth LED even though we're at LED 5. And I can show you that by, by changing that back to 7. 
So we change that back to seven. So I'll upload the sketch again. can see it went off before the LED lit. So that's the digital LED hourglass, or in this case an 18 second timer. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and or comment. And I'll see you next video.